I'd like to introduce Father Adrian Hilton. He's going to be joining us tonight, and there he is. Welcome, Father. You're still muted. Um, Father Adrian is the parochial vicar of Old St. Mary's uh, Church and Sacred Heart Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, he's a, uh, I guess, a priest, yes, um, with the Oratory of St. Philip Neri in Cincinnati. Um, I don't know if he's part of the Hilton family. If he is, I've got to get to know him a little bit better. But he's a great homilist. Um, we love Father uh, a lot. This is my home parish here. And he was uh, raised in Cincinnati. He's one of seven children, ordained in 2015. And he also, on top of being parochial vicar for both Old St. Mary's and Sacred Heart, he is the chaplain to Christ Hospital and to Ham Hamilton County Jail. So he's answering the call to take care of the, the ill and the uh, prisoners. So, Father, the floor is yours. You can unmute yourself, and I'll back out. Well, thank you so much, Chris. Um, thanks for having me. I'd like to thank you for all the work you do, but uh, thank you to all of you at Gospel Missions uh, for your work. Really appreciate um, all that you do, and certainly keep you in my prayers. Um, Chris has put a lot of pressure on on me here, so saying uh, he's from uh, our parish, so I got to deliver here. So uh, when I realized that Bishop uh, Strickland is typically the one giving the reflections, I thought it was maybe the ultimate setup here. I don't know how you fill the shoes like that, but God must want me here for uh, a particular reason. So, uh, again, thank you. And um, I think it's kind of very um, apropos seeing that a lot of what you do is prayer for family, church, and country. Because I wasn't sure tonight whether I wanted to take um, a distinctly spiritual uh, direction or more of a catechetical direction on this. Ultimately, I decided to take a sort of catechetical direction and I wanted to talk about the virtue of piety, because in the Joyful Mysteries, St. Francis de Sales connects the finding of Jesus in the temple with this virtue. Of course, we hear, your father and I were looking for you, uh, and, our, and our Lord saying to, to Our Lady, you do not know that I should be about my father's business. And so we sort of see this interaction um, in duties offered to God uh, in the presence of the temple, prayer, uh, religious duties, but also this parental interaction as well. And so that'll fit very nicely in with this um, discussion on the virtue of this reflection on the virtue of piety, uh, because it affects those things very much. And oftentimes we think of the virtue of piety as simply um, just quiet, nice, nice prayers. And while there's a dimension of that in the virtue, it actually is a bit more nuanced. But before I get right into the virtue of piety, I want to uh, talk about just briefly the virtue of religion. Uh, and it's something that we, we don't hear about terribly often, but something incredibly important. And there is a distinction between virtue of religion and the virtue of piety, which I think is important to understand as we kind of go through. Now, in the virtue of religion, there is first uh, a basic knowledge that we have to have, and it's a knowledge of God, who he is, that he is first, that he's supreme, that he is due adoration and veneration. Next, we kind of have to have a knowledge of ourselves, and that's in two ways, in relation to God and in relation to others. And finally, there is sort of a sense of justice, that which is owed to another, and we owe, first and foremost, the greatest to, our, to God, of course. But religion comes from the, the Latin word religio, and this comes from uh, religare, which means to bind us to God. So principally, this is accomplished by serving his greatness and majesty. And this culminates, of course, in the sacrifice, the sacrifice of Christ. But also a part of this is our own daily sacrifices, which are united to the sacrifice of Christ. And we see also in this binding to God, one of the fruits of this binding is an intimacy with God. But there's also connected to uh, religio this idea of religions, which means God-fearing. So the awesomeness, the awe that we have of God. And our Lord, of course, reminds us in the Gospels, fear not him who can kill the body alone, but him who can destroy the body, but then also the soul by throwing it to, into Gehenna. Yet the two together, so we have this intimacy and we have sort of this holy fear as one of the fruits of the Spirit, of course. Uh, the two together, we see the complete thirst that Christ has for our hearts 
to be totally united with his. And finally, with those two united, we can kind of there arrive at the holy understanding to fear God out of love, not love him out of fear. So religion then is a special moral virtue which enables and inclines the will to give to God the supernatural honor and adoration due to him as the creator and the supreme ruler, as well as the last end of man. The last end being that everything we do, everything we say, everything we think, everything is directed towards God and is connected with him. Now the Holy Spirit implants this desire within us, almost a thirst. And he plants this in the hearts of man to, to render this, to offer this to God. But, of course, like any grace, there has to be a cooperation. There has to be a response. So with the help of grace, we have a, dirty, we have a duty to, to nourish that desire. And this is most profoundly by fulfilling it, by doing it over and over and over again, which is any virtue, the growth and the repetition of moral excellence. And this is the same in this virtue of religion. And so the virtue of religion makes us courageous and willing to offer to the divine majesty due and proper veneration. And so we have a twofold sort of exercise, acknowledging his greatness, acknowledging our littleness, which comes about and brings about our absolute, complete, and total dependence upon him. So with that in mind, we can move on to the virtue of piety. So it is a virtue by which we give honor to those above. And it's sort of connected with uh, an idea of respect. Now, this is distinct from worship, which belongs to God alone, which is that virtue of religion. So the virtue of religion and worship being tied to that, that idea of latria, or adoration that's reserved only for God. So in the virtue of piety, we honor those above us. And this honor is the praise or some action given to honor someone's excellence. What is their excellence? St. Thomas will say that, St. Thomas Aquinas will say that their excellence is their virtue, so their exercise of their virtue. And now, there are two kinds of excellence or virtue. One is a power that they have, it's the, their authority. So they have it because of who they are, their office or their role. The other is a person who has the habit of something, so the practice of X, Y, and Z. So take temperance, for example. They know how to kind of regularly handle themselves with food and drink. One is sort of there by their office, by their authority, if they have it by who they are, and the other is obtained by its practice. You know, there are other parts of piety which are important, and it's also the proper care of those beneath us to ensure that they have what they need to flourish, to grow in virtue, to be good, to assist them in reading their, reading, uh, sorry, reaching their own final end. Now, there's an interesting kind of look that we can, uh, we can have, and I think it's important, especially in today's world, about the idea of equality. You know, uh, from the 16th century uh, on, and certainly into the French Revolution, we see it very much in our own day, this idea that everything has to be equal. Now, the church and the saints have always understood equality sort of in two ways. Now, there is equality in nature. So, by the mere fact that someone is a human being, they have this inherent equality that one human soul is worth more than the entire created universe. Every single person, no matter who they are, the fact that they are a human person, that they have a human soul, makes that the case. Now, there's a distinction between the equality of accidents. So, uh, you might be better looking than I am. You might be smarter than I am. You might be more athletic than I am. These things just are these accidents that are part of who we are, that we're different. We see this kind of whole debate even just in, you know, what is a man, what is a woman? Um, and we kind of get into this sort of confusion about the reality of equality. And people kind of have gotten into a sort of confusion that if things are different, that they immediately have to say one is better, one is better than the other. And that's not necessarily the case. They're different, different qualities. They have different purposes, different meanings, things that they are meant to pursue. And so a proper grasp of who is who and who am I. So that's the good, the bad, the flaws, the talents, all of it. And so with it then, there is kind of a knowledge in accord with reality and connected then with the virtue of humility or 
understanding things as they are, not inflated, not fake. So with piety then, we also have duties towards ourself. Do I love myself too much? Do I not challenge myself uh, enough in regards to my vices and my failings? Uh, do I not challenge myself to continue to excel and polish off and continually train the existing virtues that I have? Do I fail to practice proper mortification and penance? Do I kind of skimp away or uh, walk away from prayer or slow, sluggish to go to prayer? How do I spend holy leisure and recreation? These things all have a way in which we have duties to ourselves in order to grow, to, to develop in virtue, and therefore to be closer to, to God. There's also, of course, as we kind of already hinted out, a dimension of justice, to, to do or recognize something for some reason. So uh, someone does this, and then, then they get this. The classic example is kind of like um, a work contract. You do this, this much work, I'll pay you this much of the wage. So piety is a virtue just beneath uh, the virtue of religion or worship. Now, God designs human nature in a certain way. He designs, he, design, he designs it to do certain things. And so naturally, we give honor to those above us. You know, as a child, um, before you know, we learn too much, before kind of too much sin, if you will, enters in, um, we kind of are very much inclined to listen to our parents. We feel safe with our parents. We're grasping for their hands at the sign of any danger. And this is kind of inherent in who we are, like I was saying, as this kind of the opposite inclinations, the inclination to sin grows and we become more exposed. It becomes a greater challenge. And therefore, keeping these things in their proper place, helping us to grow in this much needed virtue of piety. Uh, you know, our Lord says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And St. Paul, I do not do the things that I want to do. So uh, those who are beneath us, to help them have what's necessary for them to live the godly life. We can see this with children. You know, parents uh, ought to provide. They're to teach. They're to nourish. They're to encourage. And they're to lead them to the truths of the faith and to the truths of the moral life. And we can have husband uh, to his wife. We can have priest to his people, teachers to their students. You know, authority is generally for those beneath him. We can even just look kind of at the life of a priest, that their place is there for the benefit of the people, if it's used correctly. St. Thomas Aquinas says that a tyrant is a leader who leads for his own good, not the good of those beneath him. And this can be applied to anyone in any state of authority. So we can look at this um, as obviously with God, with country, with church, with family. So he cares for those beneath him. He does not take advantage of them. And the virtue of piety holds leaders accountable for how they handle and treat those under their care. In looking at the virtue of piety, there are three, three kinds. The first is, we would say, domestic. And it's, primary meaning of pi it's the primary meaning of piety, and it's having things in their proper place, so within the home. But great love is really demanded here. It's kind of a strange phenomenon. I think people see it um, once they hear it. But it's often the case that we treat those closest to us the worst, and we kind of give um, the best pieces of who we are, of our personality, um, of our compliance to complete strangers. But... This is kind of disordered, very much so. St. Thomas Aquinas would say it. But St. Francis de Sales reminds us, it is to those who have the most need of us that we ought to show our love more especially. And so I think it's very important to kind of keep this truly in, in the forefront of our mind as we deal with all of those who, who are in our lives. Again, spouses, children, and parents. It's imperative that our charity shines and radiates in these places especially, having this proper order in our lives of God, my spouse, my children, my family, friends, everyone else. The next we could say is a civil piety. Um, in our own political climate uh, today, this is particularly important to, to reiterate and to know, uh, but it's civil or natural uh, office. So it's excellence in relation to their authority and not necessarily their habit of virtue. So um, again, kind of recognizing the difference between um, 
an appreciation for the authority or the actual habit that's that's been developed, making that person morally excellent or good. Um, so there's kind of an interesting quote that you get the leaders you deserve. I've always kind of found it very fascinating. Um, but it really shows to us kind of the power of prayer, the power of being united, the power of prayer and fasting, uh, mortification, but being bold and courageous. And I think we're seeing glimmers of that here and there. We've had um, you know, very heroic and courageous uh, bishops stand up recently, um, not only your own Bishop Strickland, but of course, uh, like Archbishop Cordiglione and others, um, really speaking the truth and to speak it with uh, love, to speak it with charity, to have the best interest of those uh, and who hear their words. So no matter what the case may be, uh, we have the obligation for respecting the office. So we treat them as their office demands when we're in their presence. And this is important because it also affects our virtue. You know, we will grow or fail in our observance of this. It's why we can never be brought down by scandal, no matter what. <clears throat> so, St. Francis de Sales says again, quote, those who commit these types of scandals are guilty of the spiritual equivalent of murder, but I here among you to prevent something far worse for you. While those who give scandal are guilty of the spiritual equivalent of murder, those who take scandal, who allow scandals to destroy faith, are guilty of spiritual suicide. And so I think it's a beautiful reminder that we have to have an incredibly strong faith. And faith is a gift from God. And we have to beg him each and every day so that we can continue to be these lights to the world, so that we can kind of sacrifice, the, be these victims of, of love, so as to bring Christ to others and, and develop this uh, so important, this, um, this proper order. It starts first and foremost with hearts filled with charity. So, um, you know, this uh, bad example, if you will, can be found domestically, civilly, spiritually. Bad parents, bad presidents and congresspersons and judges, etc. Bad bishops, priests, sisters. We don't have to respect their lack of character, though we always have to respect their office. So the third kind of piety then, of course, is religious piety. And there are two parts. God, of course, contains all excellence. Any honor shown to anyone is ultimately an honoring of God in a certain sense. So honoring the ministers of God, anyone dedicated to God, um, parents who are, prim who are primarily the teachers of the faith, the teachers of the things of God in the family. By honoring all these people, we are honoring, uh, we are exercising kind of the religious sense of piety and honoring those who bring God to us. Uh, it also is important in that it creates and establishes and helps foster right order of culture and society. And so when we see kind of truly the holy exercise of piety, we can arrive finally at St. Augustine's kind of definition of peace, which is the tranquility of order. When things are in their proper place, we have this peace that comes only from God. You know, sometimes we'll hear uh, people say that virtue is its own reward. You know, peace is the result of following the commandments of God and being properly ordered in relation to him and to others. So each of us has a profound duty to lead others to Christ, and in every thought, every word, every action, like I said, will help accomplish this, or will help uh, to push it aside, to prevent it. And we always want to be cooperators with God. That is what um, true holiness is. We can say that holiness corresponds in so much that God's will and our will align, that God's will and our will are the same. And the more that we can say that, the more that we've entered into to deep and profound holiness. And so we place um, all of our intentions, all of our hopes, all of our desires and prayers into uh, the hands of Our Lady who did this so, so well. So may God bless you now and always. Amen. Thank you very much, Father. Would you be so kind as to give us a blessing? I'd be happy to. So. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And I want to thank you again for joining us. <laughs> you always make me think of things, and I'm like, you wrote that for me tonight. Is that what it was about? Just like your son's <laughs> sermons. 
um, when I walk out of mass on Sunday, I, and usually I'm like, you, you were talking right to me. Really? Come on. Um, I want to thank you again. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and invite some folks. If you have any prayer requests, please send them in to Power Hour at gospa.org, powerhour at gospa.org. Again, we pray three times a day at the mission, and we remember those prayers. So, you know, pass this on to other folks, and feel free to, to invite a friend. God bless you all. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Wednesday.